test, test. All praise is due to Allah. In the name of Allah, the Beneficent, the Merciful, I bear witness that there is no God but Allah, and Muhammad is his messenger. We greet you, all that are listening, all that are watching, with the greeting words of peace and paradise. Assalamu alaikum. Praise be to Allah. We are here today in effort to continue our conversations around Table Talks Live. Table Talks Live is a framework in which we are able to, praise be to Allah, now begin to um, discuss uh, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad's Table Talks. In doing so, uh, we truly are uh, extending an effort to show the reality of the fact that every word spoken by the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, every word received is a word of life. And therefore we should see life in ourselves and in our communities if we act upon what he has taught us and what we have been given. Table Talks is another source by which we can hear, read, and learn from the words of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. So we thank Allah for this resource that has been provided um, to us through a very unique manner in which, inshallah, we will discuss uh, more of. At this moment, we are um, going to have questions. We're going to have a time for reflection. And most of all, we are going to have our dear brother, student minister Carlos Muhammad, National Archivist of the Nation of Islam, uh, join us today um, on a very, very critical time for us to reflect and remember the legacy of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, uh, to commemorate the life of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. So we thank Allah for this day. We thank Allah for the Honorable Elijah Muhammad and his chief student, the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. Thank you, brothers and sisters, for joining us for another conversation on Table Talks Live. So inshallah, shortly, our brother uh, will join us. This will be available on YouTube, and inshallah, we will also post on um, Instagram. But right now, for our Facebook family, uh, we are live. Praise be to Allah. Greetings to you, Brother Michael Suleiman. Thank you for joining us the other night. Uh, and greetings to our sister, Walaikum Salam, Sister Donna. I pray Allah you are well and your family are doing well. Um, and Sister Lorraine, Sister Lorraine Muhammad, praise be to Allah. Thank you for joining us the other night as well um, and sharing some of the history that uh, you allowed us to learn um, about your experience in Chicago for the last uh, address of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. 1974 Savior's Day, praise be to Allah. So please invite friends and family uh, to the table and inshallah we'll have a discussion uh, that will prove inshallah to uh, be one of not only a, a fruitful discussion but one that will allow us to uh, engage our families and engage ourselves around new things that we may or may have uh, not been introduced to, but anytime we have our dear brother online with us or together, our brother Carlos, student minister Carlos Muhammad, we always find uh, through brotherhood and through our coming together, the spirit of Allah present. 
Uh, so we thank Allah for all that are joining. And please, as we continue, um, feel free to drop questions, comments, um, and we hope to get to those questions uh, throughout the conversation um, and presentation this evening. Uh, inshallah, as we uh, continue and move forward, um, we plan to have additional guests uh, soon, uh, actually this October, I believe on the uh, 23rd, uh, we will have our dear sister, Dr. Shakila Muhammad, who is the original designer of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad's Fez. So we thank Allah for our dear sister and for her agreeing to come on uh, to join us, inshallah, on the 23rd. So praise be to Allah. Uh, again, this evening, uh, we have our brother, student minister Carlos Muhammad from Baltimore joining us shortly. So as we wait, please make sure you follow uh, them table talks. T-H-E-M, table talks on IG and meaning Instagram and on uh, Twitter, T-H-E-M, Table Talks on Twitter. And of course, right here on uh, Facebook, we will continue to post and bring uh, and share uh, new Table Talks from the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. Also, uh, visit us at tabletalks.org. At uh, tabletalks.org, you will find uh, an online archive. We'll talk more about that, inshallah, this evening. Uh, but online at tabletalks.org, you will find um, journals on the writings or transcripts of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad's Table Talks. You will find uh, additional recordings of the Table Talks uh, that were before not available. Um, and now with modern technology, praise be to Allah, we are able to bring to you on the Table Talks platform um, more recordings of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. Uh, some of us may have the CD uh, set um, or have um, um, some form of Table Talks that in terms of recordings uh, that you may have seen at Saves Day or purchased at Savior's Day, but we are now, praise be to Allah, uh, in the midst of making these available in a broader framework uh, to allow for more recordings uh, to be shared. We know that the CDs are slowly going away, but for those that continue, uh, like myself, to be collectors, right? of recordings, you can find, inshallah, Table Talks in CD form as well at tabletalks.org. Uh, only a limited amount of them are available via CD. Uh, we are looking at, praise be to Allah, hundreds of hours of Table Talks in the archives that must now be uh, treated and presented to uh, the believers and the world. Uh, for access, and we simply cannot uh, place all that on CDs, or you would have hundreds of CDs in your set. Uh, so, inshallah, very shortly, our brother, uh, Student Minister Carlos Muhammad, will join us uh, for this live conversation. Praise be to Allah. All right, it looks like I see my brother right here. So before we start, as we opened already with a short reading, uh, we always begin in the name of Allah, the beneficent, the merciful. We bear witness that there is no God but Allah and that Muhammad is his messenger. We thank Allah. Uh, for this moment with the believers. We thank Allah for life in this hour of trial. 
And we thank Allah for the brotherhood and sisterhood of all the believers, all of our families, again, in the time of trial. And we thank Allah for his blessing of life. I'm going to uh, try to bring our dear brother on momentarily. The song come on, but I think we will. There. Brother Carlos? Yes, sir. Can you hear me? I hear you fine. Praise be to I, I can't see you, though. Right. Give me a second. I think oh. um, the, the issue is, is I think that the um, I saw you platform, a moment ago. Right. The platform. I'm on my cell phone now and I was trying to log in from my iPad and it's basically telling me even on my phone that this platform only is supported by desktop. Um, mm. But just give me a second. I just want to plug in my phone charger. So and I'm going to turn the camera back on. I think we should be OK. Yes, sir. OK, so take your time. And so we, we, we are live and we just began the conversation. Um, so we'll, we'll okay. wait for you. No problem. We're here. OK. All right. Got you. Praise be to Allah. Uh, with the technology, uh, you know, uh, we, we, we are striving uh, with it to make sure that uh, this uh, presentation becomes more and more uh, fluid and streamlined. Uh, but we uh, hope to continue to offer uh, this framework of discussion uh, for the believers. And we, uh, at this time, um, tonight we'll hear from our dear brother, student minister, Carlos Muhammad. Now, uh, as we are awaiting our dear brother, um, and again, we know these uh, contraptions are, are what they are, but they allow us, praise be to Allah, to come together. And I see our sister Donna made a beautiful statement on Table Talks Volume 2. That's correct. If you have not uh, got your Table Talks Volume 2 or don't know that there's a volume one, let us make sure that we avail ourselves of that. You can uh, access a digital copy of it um, live on uh, tabletalks.org, meaning you have uh, the ability to view it uh, at tabletalks.org, uh, or you can make a purchase of the physical book uh, or books, two volumes of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad Table Talks. All right, praise be to Allah. We thank Allah for all that have assisted in making these available uh, to the world. Um, and again, uh, you can see those and inshallah, uh, read, study, and drink from the words of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. Uh, the beauty of this is that not only are we privy to table conversations of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, uh, but we're privy to his interactions with his students. The Honorable uh, Minister Louis Farrakhan, being the chief student, uh, is also featured in Table Talks. And when we say featured, that's a small word. <laughs> he is there beautifully uh, as an example um, of the incredible student uh, that he is. Now, some may think, you know, uh, a brother like the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan, how can you call him a student when he teaches so many and he raises so many with the knowledge, wisdom, and understanding that he has? That's the humility of our teacher. Uh, we all bear the first, that title of brother and student. And this is what he teaches us. So we remain students in the classroom of God. And we thank Allah for the chief student of the honorable Elijah Muhammad, whom in Table Talk said, this one, speaking to his minister, this one, the world can't bother. 
I want to prove that my minister, Farrakhan, is a greater light to the world than Satan. All of his men, brothers and sisters, through the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan, we truly have a blessing. We truly have a guide. And we truly, by the grace of Allah, can begin to even see how he, as a student, com had a comportment that we should pattern ourselves after. And these are the words of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. He said, if I were a minister, I would pattern myself after him, speaking of our dear minister, the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. So thank you again for joining us. And please make sure you uh, join the conversation. Uh, this is not designed to be uni unidirectional. This is designed to be a dialogue and conversation with uh, not only those that uh, are online as, uh, as uh, guests. I don't even like to use the word guests, but because everyone is welcome at the table, is not as a guest, but this is our home that we're establishing. And we will have readings from the Table Talks itself. Um, and there's our, our sister Donna said, Table Talks 2 answered a question for me that I have had for almost 10 years. I am grateful for this work. Praise be to Allah. Thank you, Sister Donna. Now, now I'm curious as to what that question is, um, but we, th we thank you for sharing and I'm, I'm gonna hopefully pull that from you before we end today. Um, thank you again for those that are joining us, uh, Sister Khalila. Praise mm -hmm. be to Allah. Wa alaikum salam. Brother Eric, assalamu alaikum. Beloved, it was good to speak to you the other day. And I believe we have our brother on now. Let's try to try this contraption to see if it works at this point. <laughs> All right. All right. All right. <laughs> Praise be to Allah. I see my brother. I can hear my brother. Um, inshallah, shortly we'll see if this connection is, is uh, should, should be here. Yeah. Can you see me? Is my audio fine, Imam? I hear you and see you fine. Okay. Praise be to Allah. You have good light? Yes, sir. Praise be to Allah. And we are live with our dear brother, student minister, Carlos Muhammad. Thank you for those that have been um, waiting for us as we work through. Uh, and as you may see, if you've been following, we're getting a little better and better each time with the technology. Uh, and uh, we thank you for your support. We thank you uh, for your uh, participation. That's a key word, inshallah. We thank you for your participation. And we encourage your anticipation. Please uh, share with your family and friends uh, so that we can tonight reflect on the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, who's now celebrating, there he is, there he is, mm -hmm. celebrating uh, 123 years. This is the uh, commemorative day coming up tomorrow, October 7th. Today we commemorate and reflect on the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, his legacy. Um, and also uh, we want to learn more from our dear brother, student minister, Carlos Muhammad. Now, if anyone has ever sat with this brother, he is a walking encyclopedia, praise be to Allah. <laughs> you know that uh, books, they say have a spine, books have a face, books have a back, books have ears. <laughs> so books are people. These all generate uh, from a person. And I'm looking at my brother, you know, we often have uh, likely visited you <laughs> in person. We often travel together uh, through the Table Talks uh, format. Um, where we have visited um, uh, Pittsburgh, uh, Baltimore, of course, Washington, D.C., Detroit. Uh, Detroit. 
we've been all over the country, Houston, yes, Austin, yes. Uh, praise be to Allah. So those that have um, may have actually attended a Table Talks live event, uh, go ahead and show us, you know, a, a dua sign or a thumbs up uh, to let us know that you've actually experienced um, a Table Talks live event. This framework is designed to do very much um, the same thing, same outcome desired, is to uh, have a communion with the believers, uh, with our community as well. Uh, if many have been to a Table Talks event, um, you may know it's not only in the mosque, but we've also had uh, forums you know, uh, community forums where we are seeking to raise the awareness around the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan to an entirely new generation. That's right. So, so praise be to Allah. So I'm going to lean back for a second and allow my brother to, uh, intro I've introduced him. So I want to, <laughs> I want to, so he doesn't have to introduce himself, but I definitely uh, want our brother to share um, I'm going to start with a question, uh, inshallah. Uh, what does this 123rd commemorative birth anniversary of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad represent to you in this particular time? Yes, sir. Um, first and foremost, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. I bear witness there is no God but Allah, and I bear witness that Muhammad is his messenger. I thank Allah for his coming to us in the person of Master Father Muhammad and for his wise choice for us and our messenger Messiah, the exalted Christ, the most honorable Elijah Muhammad. And of course, we thank them both because without them, we would not have been prepared for the one that is among us today that has made them known to the world. Right. And none other than our beloved leader and teacher extension of Allah and the Honorable Elijah Muhammad in our midst today, the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. I greet Brother Imam and all of our viewers with the greeting words of peace in our original language of Arabic, Assalam Alaikum. Wa Alaikum Salam. Well, well, my dear brother, it's, it's a joy to be back on. I thank you for your patience with me tonight. Um, and to all that are listening, um, normally I would be at home, but I am at home. I'm in the house where I grew up, uh, taking care of my grandmother, uh, who is uh, blessed to be 89 years old. And it's an honor uh, to be a caregiver to her in a time um, when she's not able anymore to do many of the things uh, that she has been used to doing. And uh, so I just appreciate the opportunity to still be able to come uh, to you tonight. It's funny, Imam, I'm sitting in my old bedroom. What? <laughs> my, my backdrop is this has been in the house since I was born. <laughs> so it's <laughs> my little closet uh, that I had. So it's a humbling night to be on. And to your question, wow, 123 years. Uh, tomorrow we will commemorate the birth of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. And historically speaking, uh, inshallah, we have posted before and some may have heard, but we will post it so that you could read the Honorable Elijah Muhammad's words, inshallah, tomorrow. Mm. That, uh, he knew that he was born in either the first or second week of October. That's right. That's right. And that he did not know the exact day, but he settled on the 7th. And so when the first or second week of October would pass, he would say, I'm so-and-so old. Uh, that's how he would calculate. And for those that may not know that at the turn of the century, uh, coming out of the 1800s um, into the 1900s, um, there wasn't a, a true um, consistent birth certificate system in place, especially for many of our people that were still living in the rural South. Um, and the old school method was is that when someone in the family was born, uh, they would write their name and the day that they were either brought home or if they knew the day that they were born inside the Bible or in some right. um, um, family book 
um, and, and they were practicing archiving. They were keeping their records when there was no vital statistics to go to. So this is why the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, like many of his time, um, could not actually tell you on a document, maybe until later when it was established, the, the actual day that they were born. However, we know that um, Allah came to us as a savior for us. That's right. And as a result, the honorable minister said that he came wearing hats and he conferred these hats on the honorable Elijah Muhammad and himself. And one of these hats is savior too, because it's the honorable Elijah Muhammad that saved us. And it is the minister that is saving us from the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. So when you think of um, the beauty of this man uh, with a third grade backwards education, if you will, mm. and as a result of divine intervention, he raised us up. So I close it with this. What does the 123rd mean to me? I'm just blessed generationally, along with those of my generation, to be a follower of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad under the leadership of the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan, because without Minister Farrakhan, we would not even be celebrating the 123rd birth anniversary of the living Christ. That's right. Honorable Elijah Muhammad. That's right. You there, Imam? I am. I, I, you went out for just a moment. Okay. But uh, I do hear you and, and praise be to I thank you for that comment because uh, many of us would not know uh, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad without knowing of the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan, for he has made his great commission known. Um, there's our leader, our teacher, the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. And we should all do everything that we can and that is within our power to make sure that we are students. You know, uh, I think for me, um, that is one of the key aspects of the celebration and commemoration of the birth anniversary of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. Um, as our brother mentioned so eloquently and detailed, uh, with the historical backdrop, um, the facts surrounding the Honorable Elijah Muhammad's uh, birth date. Um, that was a, a common history that was brought up among family uh, that the Bible was burned in a fire that had the Honorable Elijah Muhammad's exact birth date uh, recorded. Uh, and we thank Allah uh, for what that Georgia born man did for his people. Um, for we are now in the midst of what is being dubbed a racial reckoning, right? So we would not have even the language to describe our blackness, to describe exactly. how we are together as brothers and sisters uh, for a common purpose and common reality. And we thank Allah uh, to this day, we have not seen um, a program more valid, more comprehensive than the program that has been put before us by the Honorable Elijah Muhammad and put before this government uh, right. by the Honorable Elijah Muhammad in what the Muslims want and believe the Muslim program. So. Uh, we should all be forever thankful and eternally grateful for the wisdom. Um, and as our brother said, he lives. That's this right. is not this is not a dead mission. This is not uh, going back into some grave to dig up anything like that at all. Mm -hmm. And our dear brother, uh, as the chief archivist of the Nation of Islam, uh, has done a tireless consistent work in preserving that history. Uh, many of us may have um, visited uh, the NOI exhibit um, at our Savior's Day events 
and actually had an opportunity to interface with our brother there and see how the wisdom and knowledge just flows from the archive that the, our brother keeps in his heart. And I'm, I'm looking at my brother. We've, we've always had, we're kind of dressed the same today. Yeah. <laughs> we, we didn't plan it, you know, but this brother has always uh, had my back from the very beginning. And, and it seems that consistently we always find signs and signals and hints um, that our destinies are interwoven. So I pray, I pray to Allah, you, uh, your family um, are doing well. And I, my prayer and dua is consistent for your mother, uh, your entire family. And this is how we do. We don't abandon our families because uh, they get up in age. What we do is we, as this uh, being locked in our chambers, being sheltered in place has shown us, every institution is collapsing. Our schools are in our homes, right? Our, uh, our work is in our home. Soon you better be finding a way to have your farm in your home. That's why right. If you haven't begun that, please do. Uh, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad is a perfect example of what has been represented as uh, a complete system within his own home. And I have to mention our dear sister, uh, yeah. <laughs> Wendy, sister Wendy Sajda Muhammad. Um, she uh, is, has uh, acquired the home of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. And this was something that uh, we spoke about on uh, the last Table Talk Live uh, conversation with our guest. And, and she uh, really articulated how not only the canning, you know, the, the, the farm, uh, how Mother Clara would grow things on uh, the back porch, can in the home, um, everything was, was centered around the home mm -hmm. and ultimately uh, discussed and centered around the table for dinner and, and discussion. Uh, mm -hmm. So um, would you like to make any comment on, yeah. on those points? Yeah. Big shout out to Sister Wendy. Such yes. Um, I was blessed. We had a Zoom meeting with the uh, Historical Society to move forward with making that home and a historical landmark um, on a on a bigger level. And um, one of the things that we were uh, they they asked me questions, you know, and you know it was a blessing to have the data, tangible data that they need in order to solidify the positive works of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. And they pointed out that most of what normally they find is negative. Mm, but by Allah's right. grace, when we got done going over some of the oral tradition and work of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad in that home, as well as letting them know that what we just stated, we can show you the picture of that, or we could give you the article in Jet Magazine for that they were tremendously blown away and were thankful to even learn of um, how many heads of states and notable black professionals and people uh, in black life had come to 4847 um, South Woodlawn. So I'm just humbled, uh, dear brother, to, to serve. It is Allah's gift that he gives us in the way that he does in terms of uh, my memorization of historical dates and circumstances and have a passion uh, for collecting, if you will, uh, what most would say, oh, they just collect a bunch of old things. Mm -hmm. But somebody has to do it because those old things from the past teach us where we are in the present and can also show us something into the future. So all praise is due to Allah. Beautiful, beautiful. So as, as we speak, um, we're sharing comments uh, from those who are, are yeah. have joined us. Um, and, you know, our, our sister, Sister Donna Muhammad there in Memphis, uh, she put up a comment, and we're gonna put that up here for us, that actually she would only know if she's been to the live table talks, mm -hmm. right? Yes. Uh, or had conversations with us before. 
And her comment is, let not even air come between you. Yes. Who said who said that, Brother Carlos? Uh, that was a statement by the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan upon uh, the minister introducing us, uh, Imam and myself, um, after a question and answer session that was national, we were in the office. And I was engaging with the minister concerning something else uh, with another believer. And the, the minister was talking about the history. And he made a statement to the brother, he said, I don't know why you didn't ask him. Not He didn't say it to Sultan, he was saying it to the other brother, mm. because he has all of my history. Mm. And at the time, you know, the, the it, it just caught me off guard. I, I don't have all your history, brother minister, I, you know. But he made the statement, and then right after that, he said, um, do you know brother Sultan Rahman Muhammad, the great grandson of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad? And we had met. But the minister was cordially and, and kind of now introducing us. And he said that you two need to get to know each other. And you mm. should not let air get between you. <laughs> now, I want us to think of all the minister has shared in terms of things the Honorable Elijah Muhammad said to him at a certain time. And he just would say, yes, sir, and move yes, on. And then eventually over time, those things would begin to unwrap. And so, and that's what happened with me and brother. So we began to talk. And then as time went on, there was two things, if you don't mind me sharing, that was happening. Um, I was studying um, elementary Arabic and of course, Islamic etiquettes. And Imam was not yet named Imam yet over the uh, nation. Um, and as we began to meet with each other, I would ask him because he was the Arabic teacher. So I would ask him questions about this, that, and the third. And then we would have these long conversations about Islamic sciences. And in that conversation, I would say, oh, you know, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad wrote this this way. And in a document that I had, he stated this that would coincide with what Imam was saying from Islamic sciences. Mm -hmm. So in so many words, the minister knew that we both had something that each other needed. Teach, that's right. See, because eventually I would need someone that I could go to to ask the kind of questions that mm. I had about the language, about Islamic sciences. And Imam needed documentations and he had things too, but it was like filling in the gaps for each other with this. And as time went on, our brother grew on into the post of national imam and he had a brother already there with him that said oh good almost now like i got somebody i can talk to that's right <laughs> you know that's exactly yes sir and and along uh, uh, with brother eric as well uh down the line but that's right to say that the minister saw that uh the whole time and 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 it has been a beautiful beautiful journey uh together and I just thank Allah that we're here uh, tonight to be able to share on this beautiful man, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. Allahu Akbar. You know, um, it's very rare that you run into people uh, or meet people that you really gel with instantly. You know, there wasn't a, a need for us to grow, to have love for one another. It was very instant. It was very instant. Um, and to hear the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan say what he said uh, about not letting air come between us, you know, that in itself um, really, it, it, I don't think we, I fully realized what he meant by that in the beginning, uh, but what began to happen is that throughout our travels around the country, uh, we were able to um, support one another in ways that always complemented. And, you know, and if you know our brother Carlos, he is a very giving person, very free about what he offers of himself. You know, you don't hear him coming back talking about where's my 10% 
consulting fee, you know, <laughs> where's my, where's my credit in this or the other, you know, this brother uh, gives of himself. Um, and one of our watchers and listeners um, on one of the points you made about uh, reviewing the documentation and how we interact with one another, particularly around the history, one of the comments made uh, from Brother Ga uh, Gabriel, Gabriel Lopez. He said, we did, speaking of the um, historic exhibit, historical exhibit, NOI historical exhibit uh, for Savior's Day. He said, we did, and to see the handwriting of Master Father Muhammad is unreal, wow. And there, as, there it is, and our brother's putting it up to the camera right now, uh, to actual, actually see writings of the honor of, of Master Farouk Muhammad, right? To the Honorable Elijah Muhammad that were words of guidance, words of encouragement, words of validation to the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, words of instruction, uh, sometimes very strong instruction, you know, <laughs> <laughs> to, to his, his student as uh, maybe Brother uh, Carlos could share something on that point. What do you, yeah. what, what, what has been some of the jewels you've seen in these writings of the honor of, of Master Fat Muhammad to the Honorable Elijah Muhammad? Well, first and foremost, I can tell you, um, we had heard of the absolute love that the two had and have with each other, but in mm. those seminal stages from the very beginning, it was like what you just described. It was instant uh, with the Honorable Elijah Muhammad mm -hmm. for the Savior and likewise. And they were very, very close. Um, so much so that we heard in some of the writings in history that the Honorable Elijah Muhammad would um, dress like him and they would they would kind of dress alike. Uh, in fact, if the Savior had a suit, he would give the Honorable Elijah Muhammad one kind of just like it, almost like he was making it clear that you're my mirror as a student and in, in the preparation. So in these letters, we saw the care, the absolute love and care that the Savior had for the Honorable Elijah Muhammad as he was bringing him along. Right. So like any good teacher, um, of course, he always loved, but even when he had to kind of, you know, get at the Honorable Elijah Muhammad about something, it was still with love. It, it, it was hot, but you know, <laughs> when your parent loves you, That's if right. it was hot, you probably deserved it, but it was not done in a way to uh, damage the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. It was only to push him further. And I know now reading these letters, he knew what his servant could take. Mm. And and so one of them that stick out is, um, you know, he was reminding him about while he was out teaching and he was saying, you know, yes. do not cook. Stop preparing these hard meals, hard meals. <laughs> you know, and then trying to give the people 100 percent Islam. And he said, you know, cool down, mm. like calm down, you know, because you know, you, 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 you're kind of going hard, so to speak. And he says, that's what, exactly what you did in Gary and in Everston the last mm -hmm. time. So he said that, you know, basically you have to feed them, you know, baby food. That's right. Uh, as you Soft bring meals. them. Right. And so the care that he took. And in this one letter, uh, later on down the line, now we're at the point where he's really allowed the Honorable Elijah Muhammad to do most of the teaching. And look at what he says, though, as a, as a great teacher. And this, I can honestly tell you, became the hallmark of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad with his ministers and laborers. He taught them in similar fashion. He didn't throw them away. He kept working with them. And the Honorable right. Minister Louis Farrakhan has done the same in that tradition. He writes here in uh, 1934, April the 3rd, 1934, from Master Fard Muhammad to the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, 7 p.m. at night. 
Mr. E. Muhammad, the Minister of Islam, North America. Dear brother, I received your letter today and I was made happy to know that you are going after your labor 100%. Hmm. You may, now listen, you may make a lecture on like this subject, arise and deliver yes. as soon as he or she received their own. He says, look into the poison book, speaking of the Bible, and find this. He says here, write often and ask questions. Tell all about you, your labor, anything that you do not understand from your brother, W.D. Farr. So you see the care, you know, make a subject like this. Then he's pointing him in the direction of where to look. But then if you have questions, ask me. Yes. Even if you don't understand. So this is some of the beautiful history as we celebrate 123 years of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad in the early days of his development as a student. Praise be to Allah. You know, the, the uh, recall, I love how you um, really consolidated several letters mm -hmm. uh, and gave the listeners an idea of the student teacher relationship. Um, and even in what happens, there becomes with this documentation, um, uh, a, a new documentation to arise that verifies, right? Yeah. And, and that is what we began to see also in table talks. Um, uh, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad referring to some of these historical encounters with uh, Master Farouk Muhammad. Um, and when you read what you read in the letters of uh, Master Farouk Muhammad to the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, you know, uh, things that our brother brought up, the extreme care and sensitivity. One of the letters I recall, um, the Savior writing, he said, I know, he said, I can see you crying. I can see you while you're reading this. He said, don't cry, right? Mm -hmm. um, and to have that depth of insight and care as you're raising, hear that word, raise, mm -hmm. right? Master Father Muhammad raising the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. Mm -hmm. uh, in another table talk, we were, uh, you know, speaking on the language, one of our brothers who's listening in now uh, mentioned Brother Michael Suleiman. He mentioned the language to describe our blackness. Mm -hmm. You know, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad said in a table talk, he said, you don't hear them speaking of the enemy. You don't hear them calling you nigger much anymore, do you? Mm -hmm. He said, I stopped them from that. Wow. You know, he said, I stopped them from that. Mm -hmm. So how did, by giving us the language black, which we know the Honorable Elijah Muhammad has taught us, uh, black is universal, universal. you know, uh, that this began to set something for us that we must begin to reignite and regenerate in our black and brown communities and families, the indigenous originals, aboriginals across the planet. Um, it went beyond the borders of the quote, black American, right? So the teachings ha have been blessed to have traveled. Our brother has traveled, brother student minister, uh, Carlos. Uh, we see a connection that is based around the struggle of a people worldwide that has uh, touched the hearts of so many. We cannot forget that Master Father Muhammad traveled 9,000 miles ah, that's right, right. to come and get his what? Own, right? And, and when we see uh, the turning of we, the lost found in the wilderness of the West, right? Mm -hmm. Back to our, our forefathers and family in the East and those hands coming over the masthead as, as we've seen, uh, that language of blackness, you know, when you hear Pan-African, that's Elijah Muhammad. That's when right. you hear uh, do for self, independence, that's Elijah Muhammad. 
uh, and and this resonates from not only the so-called little man in the dust, right? But to those who have now risen in power and and eminence to be leaders of their own nations. So we thank Allah for this union between Master Fadr Muhammad and the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, a union where the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan, I wish I, I hope I can find this quickly, uh, described so beautifully in a table talk uh, where he was speaking uh, to the Honorable Elijah Muhammad about uh, his relationship with Master Fat Muhammad. And in words, oh, I want to quote it correct mm -hmm. and exact. I'm going to find it. Yeah. Brother uh, Carlos, as I find it, can you go ahead and build on that point? Yes, I, I will, um, because I have the letter uh, that you were, oh. <laughs> were quoting from. Okay. So I will share it with you because we're talking about this beautiful relationship. And so the Savior is telling the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, I have treasured all my life love for the lost found nation of Islam. Teach. And the time will prove all things righteousness must be revealed and come to an understanding of all mankind. Now, brother, and in these letters, whenever the Savior would come off of script form of handwriting to block letters, like it would mm. be the equivalent of all bolding caps. or all caps, uh, letting us know that it is very important. It says, now, brother, in all caps, I can see you when you read this letter. Mm. Don't cry. But think of the future, think of the future and steady your nerve, mm. study your lessons and the wonder you are doing, which measured them all the wealth in the world. See, so okay. when you look at the love that the savior has for us, but now putting that love in him, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. He knew that he would cry because the Honorable Elijah Muhammad had the right kind of heart to love us at a time that was soon coming where the master teacher would not be physically there with him. And so I, I just wanted to, to share that from what you, you pulled from the letter. Now, okay. You see, there's there's sharing, and then there's like dropping a bomb of a beautiful gift. <laughs> that right there uh, is also one of man, one of the highly resonating uh, portions of the letters that um, the Savior wrote uh, to the Honorable Elijah Muhammad that resonated with me. I, I found the page uh, here oh. on page 128 of Volume One of the transcripts. Um, of table talks. The Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan, dear apostle, dear holy apostle, being with you for three and a half years, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad interjects, he says near three and a half years. Mm -hmm. Minister Louis Farrakhan, Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan continues and says, yes, sir. He put himself in you. Those were the words you just said, Brother Carlos. Mm -hmm. He put himself in you. I've heard your mother, dear apostle, one day say, and I shall never forget this, Mother Marie, in this little room right here, she said, and this right here was at 4847 South Woodlawn in the uh, dining room of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. In this little room right here, she said, quote, he is not the same man that I born in this world, she said, quote, Allah made him over with his hands. Allah made him over with his own hands. And she was saying that you looked in other words, that you were not the same child that she gave birth to, that something had happened to you. 
since Master Fat Muhammad had taught you. And to me, it was just like he nursed you right up into himself and made you to fall in love with him so completely that you didn't want yourself, you wanted him. And when you didn't want yourself, and then the Honorable Elijah Muhammad interjects, he says, he said that better than I could. <laughs> now stop right there for a moment. Come on. He said that better than I could. That's right, brother. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad speaking. He explained it right, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad speaking to the table. Then our minister continues. And so the self of Elijah died and accepted the self of God. And he came into you and you became as one. And he planted in you the germ, the seed of himself, and then conditions all of your sufferings, nourished. That which, that which he had put in you until now you are matured in him. And we have him standing and sitting and walking and thinking for us in you. Praise be to Allah. And the Honorable Elijah Muhammad says, definitely he's got it right. And he's got it according to the Quran and the teachings of Allah and his messenger. The minister is very wise you've got it right brother praise be to allah praise be to allah that is so beautiful and that's volume so, one of the table talks and please uh someone asked where to get them if you visit tabletalks.org they're there inshallah um also not only an archive uh, digital archive but also for uh, the hardback copy not hardback uh, i'm sorry the paper uh physical print praise be to allah Praise be to Allah. Thank you, Brother Carlos, for sharing that from uh, the letters. And, and again, those who are tuning in, this is the format. It's designed to be uh, an exchange. A, 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 mm -hmm. You're included in this conversation. Welcome to the table. Uh, we uh, desire to continue these conversations as often as we can, um, particularly as we are sheltering in uh, or we are in our chambers, making our homes, our houses of worship. That's another institution that's in the home now, that's right? right? So this entire platform is designed to be a study, right? Uh, this is not something that uh, we just wanna jaw jab and reflect on something historical, which we are reflecting on history, but this is to be a living, a living reality, something that we eat of we drink of and apply. Uh, one point the Honorable Elijah Muhammad would make often in table talks, uh, we haven't gotten to this portion of uh, transcription yet, uh, mm -hmm. but in words, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad would consistently say that he did not want anyone to get how the Savior Master Fat Muhammad cleaned him up. He said, you look at me now like I'm in words spotless, you know, and, and this is what one of the uh, guests at the table said. I can't even think of you in a manner in which you speak. He said, well, I was in the mud. Mm -hmm. he said, and this was something that he would consistently say is that uh, and we know some of us know the history. Um, Brother Carlos, could you share some of that history of the now these are these are firsthand stories I would hear from my grandmother, mm -hmm. uh, my grandfather, um, and in table talks as well from the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. Um, and when my grandparents would share these histories, it was very very hurtful in many ways. That when I say hurtful, it was a sorrowful time uh, yeah. for the family when uh, my grandparents and and family moved up from uh, the South, from Georgia to Detroit, seeking a better life like most of us did uh, in, in the second great migration here in, in America. Um, but when the Honorable Elijah Muhammad settled in Detroit, uh, Brother Carlos, do you wanna give us a little history about, about that? Sure. 
Um, you're right. Uh, like many of our people that were uh, trapped in the South um, had become the victims of the wicked um, sharecropping schemes uh, right. of the South, though they were very skilled at growing crops and knew what to do uh, from the land being ex-slaves. Um, many of them were tricked what they had grown. They could never really benefit financially and ended up becoming indebted. And of course, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad being a new generation, he himself was not a slave, but he was a, a descendant, a early descendant right. generationally of our people that had been enslaved like his family. And so as a result, he saw things that affected him as a child. Um, he said himself that he used to watch his father preach. And, you know, he knew that he wanted to follow in the tradition of his, of his father. And I'm so sorry because of the mechanism that I'm on. I can't show you a picture of his father and mother uh, at the time. He would if I, you know, was on another device. But suffice it to say, he wanted to follow in that tradition, but he saw the chinks in the armor of the church at that time. Um, then, as he would go um, in walking in the South, he also experienced a seeing a black man hanging from a tree. That's right. um, so you got to think of a boy that sometimes would go to school, but most times couldn't because his hands were needed in the fields so that the family could survive. These are all things that are affecting him. So when he kind of got older, and like many of those that were in the South, grew up in the South, they heard that there was better opportunity in the North with factory jobs uh, in the auto industry was now beginning to really, really bustle in Detroit and places like Toledo, Ohio as well with the rubber industry, which was the founding place of Firestone Tires. And, these two cities being close to each other were magnets uh, for our people migrating from the South. So suffice to say, he went there looking for a better opportunity along with a few of his brothers. And then he did. And like a, a good family member does, once he got established, he sent for his family and brought them up and eventually brought his mother and father up. And That's right. Now, just as things were beginning to, so to speak, he had steady work. He worked at the Cherokee, Cherokee Brick Company. He also worked for Chevrolet, right? And he was getting some stability. But right at the moment of stability, America experienced a depression. And this threw the Honorable Elijah Muhammad and his family, who were trying very hard to get stabilized, into a depression themselves and so they begin to suffer uh we hear in the documentary that they used to eat uh chicken feet meaning they would cut tails of chicken feet and eat that now none of us know nothing about that <laughs> Not it's also all. reported that they would have to eat spoiled by pouring vinegar over them to dissolve um you know the the uh molding uh, of that. They would uh, take pieces of bread and tear the molding off and eat the best part that they could. All the while now, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad and Mother Clara Muhammad's family was growing with children. Yes. And so the younger children. So one of the um, sad stories was it had gotten so bad, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, like many men, he cared about his family, but he couldn't even go home at times to even face the harsh reality that as a good man, he couldn't even really help himself or his family. And so it had got so bad that Mother uh, Clara Muhammad was reported that at a certain point, you know what? It's better that we just check out of here. And she was willing to lay the children down, turn the gas on in the house and lay herself down. That Now that's letting you know just how poor they were, how, how suffering they were. But guess what? One of her neighbors, uh, Lula Spell, actually convinced her that there was a man teaching that maybe could help her husband. And she went and heard Master Fard Muhammad, and he asked her, 
when she went down to accept, where's your husband? Now don't get spooky. He was not interested in individuals. He was interested in families. Mm -hmm. So, but because she was by herself, he, he asked, you know, where's your husband? Let me see. And, and so she responded, oh, he's, he's not here. Well, you bring him back with you the next, next time. And when she went home, as I closed this point, so excited to be able to say something to him, but was concerned how he would take it because you couldn't go to the meetings with alcohol on your breath. And the yeah. Honorable Elijah Muhammad was sipping a little bit at that time. Uh, you say what? A more than a little say, bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Why don't you say he was drinking? Well, that's not my right. place to that's judge right. my messenger like that. So I would just say he was taking a few sips, like most of us sipped and sipped the whole lot. <laughs> right? That's right. That's true. So, so, so anyway, they had told him about what happened, and he got excited. Mm. And he, along with his uh, brother Charlie went back down to the meeting and on September the 22nd, 91, and boom, there was the spark of life that saved him, his entire family, and all of us that are here today through that one individual going to that temple meeting as a result of his wife loving him enough and wanting some help, he went and therefore, he was able to help himself, help her, help his children, and help all of us today. Praise be to Allah. Thank you so much for sharing that. And, you know, um, if we heard our brother, uh, he eloquently not only gave you the backdrop of the history, but the details of the family. And when he said very, very clearly, he was going after families. Uh, there was a time uh, when Master Father Muhammad was giving names and he was not completely aware of who were brothers and sisters, right? Or, or yes. family. Mm -hmm. Give us something on them and how he uh, named the family, began to connect the brothers. Yes. Um, you know, he would, he would uh, give some of them um, names um, like Sharif um, mm -hmm. and other names. And then when he kind of found out that they were uh, related, he eventually gave all of them the name that he eventually gave to the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, uh, the name Muhammad. Mm -hmm. um, and expressing, we know that the Savior gave the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, and he gave him was Kareem. Um, yes. Because he saw that the Honorable Elijah Muhammad was a noble man, but even deeper, he was a producing man. <laughs> because Which that's also, up. right, that's also the name that also means producing. So it's the Quran al Karim, it's the ever producing Quran, as well as the noble Quran. Now, this is the depth of the Arabic language. But as time went on, from what I heard, the Savior said, brother, I have a big name for you. I'm going to give you one of the biggest names that I could give you. And so he wanted to name him Abdul Muhammad. That's right. Servant of Muhammad. Uh, that's a very big name, servant of Muhammad. Okay. And so the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, from what we were told, he said, oh, you know, I kind of like Elijah, <laughs> you know. So oh. the Savior did not force Abdul on him and allowed him to keep Elijah, but nonetheless, the Savior was naming him right. What do you mean? Because he was and is absolutely the servant of Muhammad. That's <laughs> you right. Know, in, 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 in his teacher, because in the third year, he wrote his name W.F. Muhammad. See? And so anyway, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad um, now had the name Muhammad, and the rest of the family, that's the way I heard it, Brother Imam, if there's more to that, uh, please share uh, with that. Because I heard Brother John Muhammad, his brother, say that he had the name Sharif. Hmm. And Savior took it back and gave him the name Muhammad. Um, and that's probably a correlation of finding out 
that there was a relationship uh, between the two. You were very thorough, Chief. <laughs> <laughs> You're very thorough. And he got about four different angles in on us right there. Uh, things that I've heard over history and read as well. Our, our beloved brother Carlos, uh, student minister Carlos Muhammad is uh, truly a gift to our nation, uh, a gift really to the world in being a storehouse of this. And when I say, you know, this is a big word, amalgam, right? He, he amalgamated all of the histories that I have heard in relationship to the names uh, and how our family began to receive the name Muhammad in one beautiful package. You know, and Imam, it's interestingly enough, thank, as I look down, you, I, I look down Brother on the Carlo. stack. Thank you. I look down on the stack, and this is a list of names that were given to the believers uh, mm. during those times. And just to share some of the great names that the savior would give them. And look, interestingly enough now, when we, I, I'm just looking at the way he handled the honorable Elijah Muhammad on not pressing on him, Abdul, to wear that name. He let him keep Elijah. And what became the tradition was that normally the savior would not change the given name by parents. He would give us the holy name on the end. And because what was happening was it was creating a new paradigm among black people that knew you as uh, Sister Elsie, but now you were Elsie Samson. See? See, so so they knew you as Elsie's slave name, and now you got this other name. So it was a point of conversation and attraction and things like this. But these are some of the names, uh, some Samson, Sharif. Bacha, Shabazz, Shah, Allah, Landrum, Almanza, Yassin, Nawab, Rasul, Muhammad, Haziz, um, with just a few, Ali, um, you know, you, you think of these Jordan, uh, these Majid, you think of these names that among black people from America, that did not exist. These names had been stripped from us during slavery, but here our savior and deliverer was restoring us back to ourselves. There's Mother Marie Muhammad, all praises due to Allah, in that beautiful, beautiful hijab. That's right. I had to put it up here. As you mentioned, yes, inshallah, we're gonna drop others as we continue. Now we have a question uh, from our viewers and participants. Uh, Brother William Muhammad asks, I have heard two different things. Was the most honorable Elijah Muhammad born in Deep Step, Georgia or Sandersville, Georgia? Well, Deep Step, Cordell, Sandersville are all like one area, <laughs> mm -hmm. okay? Uh, kind of like, um, if you will, these are neighborhoods uh, Well, you're from East so-and-so or you're over here. But technically, it's Sandersville with different subsidiaries that are around it. So sometimes um, those names would be associated, uh, like Mother Clara Muhammad, from my understanding, was for Cor from Cord. So the Honorable right. Elijah Muhammad would walk there, you know, from Sandersville. Um, and maybe the next little subsidiary on this side was Deep Step. And so if you go back as a point of reference, it's on YouTube, but if you go to the historical documentary uh, of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad produced uh, by the Nation of Islam prior to 1975, they actually put a map up. Um, like I said, I don't have access to my, my images right now because I could actually pull that map up and kind of show you what I'm trying to say. But you know what I'm getting at. That these are just every Google that are, right that are all there, or just go to Google's map. Uh, but we have been told, as the Honorable Elijah Muhammad confirmed, confirmed he was born in Sandersville, Georgia. And the family, the family plot, the Poole family plot is in Sandersville, Georgia. Yes, there you go. 
those are the two pictures I wanted to show. Um, so I hope that helped uh, answer your question. Um, and maybe we'll post some of the, um, the pictures of, of, of the um, properties from Sandersville, Georgia, that the family uh, actually uh, uh, owned. And many were buried right in the back of one of the houses there. That's right. Mm -hmm. These are the parents. Yes. Of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. Mother Marie. And Brother and Wally. Brother Wally. Mm -hmm. Praise be to Allah. Now, it's not often that you find uh, a son that you follow into a new faith. <laughs> That's right. That in itself is, is, is an amazing story uh, that I, I believe is a, is a strong bearing of witness to the sincerity, the, the reality of who this man is. Uh, for the parents of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad to accept the message of Master Farq Muhammad and a altogether new religion, we want to say, but the reality is we know a good Christian is a good Muslim and yes. a good Muslim is a good Christian. Christian. And our brother, uh, Carl, that the Honorable Elijah Muhammad would listen to his father preach. And often in uh, table talks, uh, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad uh, would say, that he wanted to find a way to help his father. Yes. And we thank Allah uh, for all that we have been able to uh, see and learn in his journey, his journey as a not only a leader, uh, but as an example to the world of one who uh, has resurrected mm -hmm. from a dead state into a living state to be the leader of all of us, if we really truly understand. Um, and those who are historians who may uh, just simply see the Honorable Elijah Muhammad as a, a great historic leader, that's fine. Hey, come on um, now, come that's on now. Fine. But if you do not see that the hand of God is working through that man and through his student and students to create an entirely new reality, one which many still have yet to trace their spiritual DNA to. As right. our brother, as our brother mentioned earlier uh, in the conversation about uh, the, the discourse of what blackness is, what is, what does it mean to be white? What and how? Science is just now catching up to the teachings of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad as that's it right. relates to race, these recessive genes. Um, and that's just one aspect. Um, you know, many discuss uh, what's called social engineering, now discussed as epigenetics. Yes. Who, who was this man, Master Fadr Muhammad? We should do our due diligence and learn of the teacher of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad and learn of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. And I guarantee you, we will learn more of ourselves. That's Praise right. To Allah. And it's interesting, um, Imam, you, you, you're so right. Um, we don't want to explore this just as the Honorable Elijah Muhammad in the tradition of just black leaders. Um, right. Though the other black leaders were definitely being fulfilled through God's choice of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. This is why the Savior made sure that as he was teaching in Detroit and in Milwaukee and in Chicago, that he would honor Noble Drew Ali, honor mm -hmm. Marcus Garvey, and explain, as he said in the letter, explain to them how they may have gotten things started, but it is for us to finish. And now some might say, well, was he borrowing from their teachings? No. It's just that there was a progression of black leadership from That's the right. on slavery. It's just that we had reached a time where God made himself known in the sense that he was among us.
but he really set the honorable Elijah Muhammad on course to teach us the reality of God, teach us the nature of the two people, black and white, teach us the real origin of the enemy and who we are in the divine fulfillment of things. So we definitely just can't lay it there in terms of just black leadership. We have to look at the divinity side of things. Imam, you there? What happened? What happened? Me off and said, Okay, you gonna send him another link? Yeah, I'm sending it to you though, right? Yeah, thank you for sharing with me. Is it gonna be a new one? Uh, don't know. Let's see. Oh, there it is. <laughs> My back? You're on. Okay. <laughs> Praise be to Allah. We're back. Uh, we're going to bring our brother, student minister Carlos, back in. I saw it, our message from my brother. He said, just remember where you left off in the conversation, Chief. Uh, it is either a Wi Fi issue or um, that's what it seems. We just lost connection. Um, Maybe it's a signal drop. So we are having a live conversation with our dear brother, student minister, Carlos Muhammad. There, straight out of Baltimore. Um, even that city has much history in itself related to the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. Um, that, inshallah, I would like our brother to elaborate on as well. Um, as we 
are awaiting our brother to come back on, uh, we would like you to continue to ask questions. Um, continue to uh, become involved with the discussion. Uh, we hope that you are learning from this uh, now in that in the same way I'm learning as we go, I, I have to say one of the most beautiful things of um, being of any relation to the Honorable Elijah Muhammad is that uh, we are as a family, members of the Muhammad family, have a beautiful gift in that um, around the world, around the country, uh, we have love that has been embedded in the hearts uh, for our family member in the Honorable Elijah Muhammad that has allowed us to be able to know more about our family's history than many have. Uh, I believe I'm in the fifth generation, uh, some seventh generation, uh, depending on where you start that, uh, of the family of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad's descendants. Imam, We've got our I brother can't back. Hear you. you cannot hear me? I hear you fine. Uh -huh. Test one, two. Test Let one, me, two. Um... Okay, uh, those who are watching, can you hear our dear brother? I can't hear you. Test one, two. I can hear you yeah, well. Let me try to, I'm going to try to re-log in. Okay, the audience is saying they can hear you. Okay, he's going to try to log right back in. We'll get it back in. Yes, thank you, uh, Sister Sonia. Our brother is dropping jewels tonight. He's dropping jewels tonight. Um, and we are continuing to learn. I'm learning from this. And as I was saying, uh, to learn more about your own family uh, from brothers like this is is a true uh and deep blessing okay, let's bring him back in test your mic brother carlos i can i can hear you can you hear me it doesn't seem he can hear me i think it may be i can't hear you mm. i haven't changed anything here let's do Test one, two. Can you hear me now? I, I hear you. Uh, and the audience is saying they hear us both. I'm not sure what to do with that, to be honest. Hey, yes, sir. I, I hear you. Uh, can you type that? Uh, I... Thank you. Okay. No, don't, don't worry. We'll take this, uh, put this up from our brother James Muhammad as we. Uh, regroup on our technology. Um, brother James Muhammad shared, Assalamu alaikum, beloved brothers, in our efforts to do our due diligence in our study of Master Far Muhammad. Will you recommend a literary source of references or books and or articles? Yes, sir, inshallah, we will do so. Uh, we're going to uh, attempt to bring our brother back on. Okay. One, two. Hear me now? I can hear you loud and clear. Man. Praise be to Allah. Yes. Sir. Praise be to Allah. Seems we have just a drop in the signal. Um, we, we're just going to keep going and flowing with it. So the, uh, the viewers and those who are participating uh, were continuing to drop questions. They said, please don't Forget where you left off. Okay. So, <laughs> and uh, well, I would uh, need somebody to tell me, uh, to the best of their ability, where where was it where it kind of went went blank? Uh, in the if somebody uh, could do that, um, then I can kind of. Where was it? Our brother went went out 
on the conversation. I think because I was still logged in. You were flowing. Yeah, you... for a time after you dropped. Uh, but I do see a question. Yes, I put a question up. Yeah, oh, go uh, ahead. Go ahead. Um, it dropped off. Oh, it was covered. Oh, somebody is replying to them. Okay. About it. I have one here from Brother James uh, that we posed a moment ago. Um, okay, it says, so Asalaamu Alaikum, beloved brothers, in our effort to do our due diligence in our study of Master Fahd Muhammad, will you recommend a literary source or reference or books and or articles to study? Uh, Brother yeah. James. I, I know that there are um, a lot of questions, so I'm not I, I, this is not just directed at Brother James, but just for the listeners in in, in a broader sense. Mm. Um, the best place Minister Farrakhan taught us as ministers um, to have a greater study of the Savior is to start with the writings of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. That's correct. Be, That's because correct. in the literal sense, it is what the Honorable Elijah Muhammad gave us directly even in the form of the teaching that validates his teacher. I'm not knocking at the fact that should we dig deeper? Yeah, now we have some tangible documents and things like that. However, there's a important factor in study. It is called context. Mm -hmm. Context. If, you, if we at any point remove context, even from this conversation, many listeners could be, get lost or misunderstand so we have to try as the honorable minister said on the 17th we have to do our best to try to keep everything as tight as we can with the words as well as the context mm -hmm. so that's why we share snippets of the letter because we can bring it up into a context but there are some that would say why can't we just have the letters Mm. Because you need the context. And if the letters just went out and there's no context for the general public or people to to get to the origin, why? It could it could become damaging. So I would I would source number one to the listeners, of course, the writings of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, the Buzz Anderson interview. It is very. a very very key uh interview. Um and then there are some other uh, writings of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad in terms of what has been made available. Um, I just had it here. Give me a second. Um, can't find it at the moment. Here we go, I think. I'll find it. But mm. there are a collection of letters from the 30s and the 40s that the family of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad and Brother uh. Minister John and Sister Bernstein Muhammad, who was the secretary of Master Fahd Muhammad. We want to thank Sister Medina and Brother Noor and all of them, Brother Abdul and, and others. I think I have it over here. Keep, yeah, keep talking. Yeah. I think I have it right yeah. here. I have it right here. I just got so many documents stacked up. <laughs> These, um, oh, here's one. Um, this is from Sister Bernstein Sharif, if you don't have this. This was the reformer and secretary to Master Fahd Muhammad. You can get some insight into the time that the Savior was among us and many things that he did as a source. That's it, that's it. Um, find and what our brother is saying about context is extremely important and it kind of sparks where we somewhat left off um, in terms of the history, the, the migration of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad North, um, the family naming. Mm -hmm. um, uh, and one of our brothers uh, made a statement, you know, you, you were actually talking about the conditions of escaping lynching, escaping uh, the hardships of the South, uh, Brother Anthony Jones, uh, he made uh, this statement. 
He said, the crazy thing is the Honorable Elijah Muhammad had to teach Islam in the 1930s, 1940s, 1950s, etc., when the enemy was lynching black people weekly. Yes, yes. So yes. to, oh, and that, and that points to where we left off is that we can't only look at the Honorable Elijah Muhammad as a great leader and uh, black liberation. Uh, those are them. Those are them from uh, our cousin Medina there in, mm -hmm. uh, in Detroit. Uh, let, let me take this down. Uh, Brother Carlos, could you show those one more time? Oh, yes. Oh, man. Sorry to make you work. <laughs> yeah, uh, this is, this is, there are actually two volumes to this. This is volume two, uh, but there's a volume one with the same cover. Mm -hmm. uh, these are letters um, starting um, as early as 1935, mm -hmm. um, going into the 40s. There's also one. Um, warning to the MGT and GCC from the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. Mm -hmm. And so we're on the question about getting a deeper insight into the Savior. The deepest That's insight right. that we can get is through the Honorable Elijah Muhammad and his minister. That's right. And that he is not just a historical black oh, leader in leader. that sense. Right. Yes. Um, and yeah, right I think ahead. that's where we left off. Mm -hmm. and That's where we left we're, off. We're talking about the reality that the Honorable Elijah Muhammad had divine intervention. And yeah. we were talking about how the Savior told him as he began to go out and teach in Milwaukee and Chicago and Detroit <laughs> that he should honor Noble Drew Ali Noble Dr. 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 because right. of the work that they had done. But he had to and remind pray for them. them. Right. Yeah. Pray for them. Mm -hmm. And that. The, um, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad was to tell them that now it is on us to finish it in the sense. Now, some ask, well, did they borrow from those teachings? No, it was just that that leadership of black leadership started during slavery all the way up until the time that the God wanted to come and now manifest the time was for a messenger to be raised for us. We make no apologies for that. Because right. here's the thing, I heard the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan say, regarding the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, and his methodology on bringing us Islam, he said, Allah does not bless error. Mm. Allah does not bless error, for we know that error is an intentional departure from what's mm. right. Jeez. So if the honorable very different Elijah from a Muhammad, mistake, right? So the honorable Elijah Muhammad was able to do a thing that is so magnificent that there's no way possible a man with a third grade backwoods Georgia education at the turn of the century or in the early part of the 1900s could ever raise a multitude of black people in the condition that they were in and civilize them, make them productive and make them a future that they didn't that they had without divine intervention mm. See? so that's, right. that's why i would say if you got so much with your sweet god then show us what show your us. sweet god is doing for you since you condemn the god that i represent that came to us in person so mm. so we gotta we definitely gotta make sure that the divinity factor Mm -hmm. is a part of that divine black leadership and the cessation of black leadership. Teach. And if we're not looking at our entire sojourn here in the wilderness of North America in that manner, we are losing out oh, on yeah. what the purpose of this is. It truly, truly, I can't express in words how uh, not only edifying, but man, in, in a world like this, in the way we have suffered as a people, if this root, if this foundation had not been established for us to see a way out and through, mm -hmm. I couldn't yeah. see anything but a loss of all of our minds that we go, go, would have gone crazy. We, we would be going crazy here. And we see many of our people that have not uh, been introduced to these teachings or to 
the students of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad are those that have been influenced by his work, like Malcolm X, like uh, Dr. King. And what do, what do we mean when we say Dr. King was influenced by the Honorable Elijah Muhammad? Oh, come on, man, let's do our history. Let's study it. Um, the two met. The two shared words. They shared uh, for, two days. for two days. For two days. Go ahead, speak on that, beloved. February, for, right on the eve of Savior's Day. They met uh, February the 22nd and 23rd of 1966 at the 4847 uh, South Woodlawn residence of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, two Georgia born black men that had differences but came together as brothers. And we all know through that study that Dr. King was not the same in the years leaving that meeting. That's right. And you and could see that the Honorable, we're not privy to what was said, but we know what, what whatever was said had a great impact on Dr. King, but also the Honorable Elijah Muhammad respected the black leaders of that time that were trying. And that's why he wrote Dr. King and said the time mm. had come for us to form a black united front, united front. for the rise of our people. Beautiful, yeah. beautiful. And, you know, I reflect on one of the interviews of Dr. King uh, where he said, uh, let me get the language right. Yes. And he began to speak on our people in the language of black rather than Negro. If you go that's back in history, you look and you find uh, Dr. King re would refer consistently as we were known, uh, mm -hmm. given the name by our former slave masters as Negroes, right? Uh, mm -hmm. At a certain point in Dr. King's development and evolution, he said, let me get the language right. right. And began to refer himself uh, to our people as Black. And we know James Brown and on and on and on. Uh, <laughs> that you know, it, we it's, it's kind of funny. You say, okay, Dr. King, Martin uh, King, uh, and Malcolm X, and then you go to James Brown, brother. What do you mean? Hey, these are all leaders and thinkers uh, for our people. And the point is, is that we cannot remove God's hand from the rise of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. Um, so we thank Allah. Uh, for all that our brother is sharing tonight. I see him digging in the crates, as we used to say yeah. <laughs> about the records. Uh, they're funny. digging in the catalogs. Oh, uh, here it is. Because someone raised a question. It was a while back um, about the Saviors, the origin of the Saviors letter. Mm. Um, and okay, T. So yes. I just wanted to touch on that just quickly. Uh, we did mention earlier and show documentation as well as the, the oral history of the names given to the Honorable Elijah Muhammad and his family, but we were uh, taught in our lessons and through others and through the Honorable Elijah Muhammad that the Savior gave out 25,000 original names. That's right. Um, and this was the pattern. So those uh, original and holy names were giving out. Um, the letter as we know it, or the letter that I wrote or you wrote uh, for the most part, that was an evolving situation. Hmm. The earliest form that we have of something being written about an original name or the acceptance of the teaching is in December of 1932. This is an actual letter uh, that was written. Go ahead. Dear Brother Fard, <laughs> I have been attending your teaching for some time and I have learned very much about myself. I know you are teaching us the truth. Please change my slave name and give me my original name. My slave name is Louise Street. And she lived at 1550 Division Street, Detroit, Michigan. Okay, so it's not like the letter we wrote but you can see the pattern of, I accepted the teaching. I'm writing you now for you to give me my name, mm -hmm, my mm -hmm. original name. So that's an early form of what we might call a savior's letter, okay? Then we have this one 
from August of 1934. Okay? Go ahead, now Brother that, Carlos. Now, now, now that evolves a little bit, Mr. W.D. Fard, dear prophet, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. not dear Brother Fard in 32, dear prophet, I have heard your teaching and I do believe that you are the prophet. Mm. And that you are the only one that have the power to save us. Please take away my slave name and what? give me my original name. My slave name is Ethel Lynch, 1460 Fort Street, Detroit, Michigan. Okay. All right. So. No, no. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, no, no. So, I, I just I just want to drop a quick asterisk to what uh, one of the earlier questions uh, was about and why our brother's going into the actual uh, archives right now. The question was, is can you give us a reference or source to study the history of Master Fark Muhammad, right? Uh, and what you see our brother doing is going to what is called primary sources. Mm -hmm. You, We are as students to study primary sources. Any universities that you may go to, um, that is um, the starting point uh, so that you are able to get the information directly, the data directly from those who experienced it rather than uh, receiving that information through a lens of a mind that is already either trying to prove their own theory mm -hmm. uh, or even seeing it through their own lens that has been conditioned by the environment that they are in to either love, hate, or be indifferent. Uh, so uh, it's important to go to primary sources first, uh, which are the, the publications of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad um, and these original documents that our brother is pulling so effortlessly from his uh, uh, suitcase there. I'm not sure what you got going on, but, but praise be to Allah. Please go right ahead. I had to bring <laughs> you got the baggies, huh? You got the baggies. <laughs> hey, I'm just, being, I'm just being transparent. Yes, no, I love it. Grace, but That's listen, love. I have to say, though, as as we kind of mentioned earlier, um, when me and Imam do what we do, it's organic. <laughs> nothing That's is right. staged. That's nothing right. is planned. It always bounces off of each other. And he's either right there for me with something or I'm right there for him. And it, it just so happens as I was leaving the house today, I was um, under the impression. I said, OK, well, I think I got everything in my iPad, I'll be good. <laughs> and Severa told me, you know, you left your bag on the table because I had prepared this bag. And uh -huh. I said, oh, let me go back and just keep, take it with me just in case. And so we did not know that I wouldn't be able to kind of pull my images up on the screen uh, to share. So Allah knew best for me to bring the hard copies <laughs> Allah, <who act>, uh, <laughs> with me. Praise thank, me too. thank you, Sabira, for reminding me. Go ahead, Sabira, give, give my sister my greetings and love. Hi, for those who don't know, that, that that is the daughter, beautiful daughter of our brother, student minister Carlos there in Baltimore. Yes, sir. So Leslie it. on the Savior's letter, just real quick because of the question. Go ahead. Now we're gonna jump from the 30s and due to time, I would only say about what became a standard of registration, what we're called registering. Uh, we find through our research that it came after the savior left as a mechanism for the Honorable Elijah Muhammad to administrate people joining. Mm. Because as people were beginning to join, it was too much to just, okay, they write this letter and the savior would sometime come in the meeting and go to the secretary and look at the book of those that have accepted and he would strike their slave name and write their original name next to it. That's where you get the secretary informing you of your name or the ex or go see the secretary for your ex 
it, and, and so those are some of the early things. But what, by the time we get into the 40s, now this is Brother George Nolan's Savior's mm. letter, Attempt. Now you okay. know many of us <laughs> had an attempt. Right, right, right. Okay, so Sister Viola Kareem had to correct this. The date on this letter is November 23rd, 1947. Okay? And that red marking, that's Sister Viola correcting. They took mm. on uh, the Savior's tradition. He would correct in red ink. <laughs> <laughs> right? I have some other documents where I got some of that red ink on the paper of the Savior, where he actually, he wrote a Savior. He gave somebody a name in red ink. Wow. Yeah, actual um, uh, believer. But this letter is a little different now. We starting to see some formula. Here's and a quick comment crazy. from a couple. Uh, Brother DeAndre X. <laughs> Dammy says, uh, the archivist never fails, <laughs> right? And then our brother Stephen M. Kelly, he says, uh, primary source is a starting point. So our brother is giving us direct, you know, the, the, the uh, uh, documentation that would be needed for us to understand the evolution. And our brother gives the greetings. Assalamu alaikum. Uh, this is, uh, I'm sorry, this is Sister Rhonda Yvette Muhammad. She says, Assalamu alaikum, Con uh, please continue the evolution of the Savior's letter. So she's, she's loving this. Go right ahead, beloved. Yes, sir. So we start to see a formulation that is similar to ours now, mm -hmm. uh, but not quite there yet. So it's still showing you it's, it's an ongoing process. This one has Mr. W.F. Muhammad, uh, 6116 South Michigan Avenue, which was the residence of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad and his family at that time. In 1947, they lived at 6116 South Michigan. Mm. Okay. Um, That's right. Says, now, on this letter, interestingly, Assalamu alaikum. Dear Savior and Deliverer, now we start to see the language, right? I have been at now, we see some of the 30s again. Mm. I have been attending the temple. Okay? Now, temple is you. Temple. Mm. Okay? I have been attending the temple of Islam for the past uh, two years. Uh, these meetings... I've been attending these meetings and I believe in the teaching. Please give me my original name. My slave name is Mr. George Nolan and wow. gives his address. Okay. And of course, we know that Brother George had to write that over again. <laughs> right. Um, you read Mark. We heard that the letter writing in and of itself was an exercise developed by the Savior and evolved by the Honorable Elijah Muhammad because many of the adults could not read or write yeah. in, in a big way. So to practice this form letter eventually that was designed was to That's help right. us learn the art of writing and being exact as Minister Farrakhan said. We had to get it exactly uh, right. And believe it or not, so much was the impression on that handwriting style as you can see i'm going to put this up just real quick and then we'll move on you see that w that mm. sister viola wrote we know that teach w. on that teach on that w <laughs> you see Go that ahead. d you mm -hmm. see those f's you see those f's down here i'm i'm kind of mirrored so it's kind of hard for me no, it's coming out well it's coming yeah. out well on so, our end. So we're, we're aware of those in our quest to write our letter. But so impressive, um, I'll just look for it as we're talking. Mm -hmm. I think it might be here. Okay, now, so much was an impression on the followers to write in that style for the letter. Many of them adopted it as the handwriting because that's what we were told. That's so true. they reconstructed their natural handwriting Teach to accept their original handwriting. And this is Sister Thelma or Sister Tahira 
who was one of the early followers out of Milwaukee, Temple Number 3, they joined in 1936. And her and Mother Clara Muhammad were very, very close. Uh, she was one of her family looked out for the Honorable Elijah Muhammad's family very, very deeply during the time of imprisonment of Muslims in the 40s. Mm. And I have the letters that the Honorable Elijah Muhammad um, would write back to them, as well as the letters Sister Thelma would write to the, uh, Mother Clara, as well as Mother Clara back to her. Now, this is Sister Tahira, as she eventually became. This letter was written in 1977 now by that time you know she was a elderly pioneer look at her script in 1977 mm. see the handwriting style yeah she still continued to write like we write the savior's letter even to write a letter about her relationship with mother clara muhammad go see? ahead so that is lastly on the savior's letter the letters that were written in the 60s or 50s and 60s are very similar to what we wrote in the rebuilding but not necessarily exactly the same uh there is a difference in language and we are now trying to get somebody's letter from their notebook in the 70s Mm -hmm. because we do have a letter from the 50s the 40s the oh, 50s yeah. and the 60s but we need someone to show us the letter that they wrote in the 70s because obviously at some point it still evolved okay yes and um interestingly enough in the early days of the rebuilding of the nation of islam the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan, as he got started, there was no processing department in the beginning of the rebuilding. That came back in 1982, in which he made all of the followers that had previously taken an X rewrite their letter. Right. But guess how you got your X prior? When you decided that you were ready to join, he would just make you take Shahada, which our letter is. It is the Shahada. Go ahead. Okay. And he would just have you say, I bear witness there's no God but Allah, and Muhammad is his messenger. No, messenger. And you would get your ex. But in 1982, you had to go ahead now as he reestablished the way of the Savior and the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. So, look, this right here, Chief, is, is uh, I'm going to use this sister's language because it, it says it immediately. Uh, it is such a rich rich history all right and what i would like to do is just briefly before we answer this next question here is play something uh from uh the table talks that will allow us to get a sense of uh the savior and his relationship with uh the honorable elijah muhammad yes sir. please stand by Brother Imam, is is are we missing the audio? Is the audio not coming through? We're just seeing the moving images. Uh, can we hear online? Just ask, because I do hear it. Okay. For those that are listening, can you type whether or not you can hear what's being played? It may be just on my end. I'm sorry. The audience is hearing it. Okay, alhamdulillah. Oh, 
people are saying they cannot hear it. Brother Imam, a whole lot okay. of are texting that they cannot hear it. Right. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, there was uh, a technical issue with the audio on that. And we'll try to work that out. Okay. Now, as we set this back up, and inshallah, we will play it, and many have heard it online. Um, the question that we have now is from our brother here. So, inshallah, we will post that uh, piece. It is available on. Uh, earlier postings on Table Talks uh, project page. Um, this question I thought was important in the context of the letter itself. Uh, there was a section of, of this video uh, piece that we had that discussed the mission of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad um, and actually in a conversation with uh, those at the table about how uh, he took on that mission from uh, the Savior. Uh, okay, can any, can everyone still hear uh, my voice and brother Carlos's voice? Check, one, two. Can you hear us both clearly? Type in and please let us know that you hear Imam and myself clearly. Testing one, two. So as we as we continue, our brother has just broke broken down the evolution of the Savior's letter, the evolution of the Savior's letter from 1930 to 1982, uh, decade by decade, uh, giving us actual um, uh, references to the original letters. And uh, the question that one of our brothers had here is from Brother Gabriel uh, Lopez. He asks. What would disqualify a letter? Okay, uh, grammar, um, punct punctuation, heavy, and whether or not the letters or the letter actually looked like the, the sample letter that was given to you uh, would be uh, the reasons for disqualification. Hmm. And, you know, and that goes back to the quote form, right? Yeah. The form letter. And, um, as we understand it, we are to take on the form, you know, as, as the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, uh, our dear minister, the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan described in the passage we read earlier, uh, is that that is the goal, is for us to uh, develop such a love and deep reverence that we no longer want ourselves, right? We want God. We want to reflect God in all aspects. And uh, a beautiful point that our brother made is that this is also representative of our Shahada. So uh, we're not limited, you know, to say, uh, you know, we're not quote Muslim if we don't take that Shahada or if our letter didn't pass, we're born Muslim, right? But this is a form or a formality that helps us to join into the ranks among several other forms uh, that uh, we may discuss at another point. But uh, we're blessed today to have our dear brother, student minister, Carlos Muhammad on. I encourage you to, uh, as we begin, I know he's an hour ahead. Uh, I don't want to keep you away from your duties and family. Um, but uh, if you have any questions regarding what we may have uh, covered. This is a, a good time to drop some new questions and we'll continue to share uh, from the archives. And our brother was about to make a point. I hope you I hope you didn't lose that point. Well, first, I want to thank everyone. Um, I normally don't do this, but I mean, 
mean, I'm encouraged to do so. Of course, you know, uh, with me uh, in the history, I, I love to share it. Uh, this is what brings me great joy. The minister says I light up differently uh, when I'm talking about the history uh, because he said that's really what I was born to do. Mm. Um, and we should celebrate when people find their aim and purpose in life because that's a sign that we all can find it. Um, so if you can, if you don't already, please follow the NOI archive page on Instagram at NOI archives. Um, if you just scroll, I mean, we do our best to give you, um, as much of the history as we can in, in little tidbits, but very powerful and impactful. And there's so much to learn in those one minute clips or just looking at a picture and learning about an event that, uh, has uh, taken place. So follow us at uh, NOI Archives on Instagram and follow the Nation of Islam Historical Exhibit on Facebook. The Nation of Islam Historical Exhibit on uh, Facebook to stay connected uh, with the exhibit and what we do uh, for the nation during uh, Savior's Day. Excellent. And we put the um, address up for you on Thank you. the page at NOI Archives. Please follow our dear brother. Uh, make sure to uh, continue the conversation. Um, we're at hashtag T-H-E-M Table Talks. Um, and these conversations will continue to go. Uh, please look at the, the richness that we have in our brother, student minister, Carlos Muhammad, to uh, not only be able to dig in the crates, so to speak, but what he has uh, really put to his heart is a reflection of his love for our nation and for not only the history, but for the Honorable Elijah Muhammad himself. And no one could have put that kind of love into this generation except for one person, and that is the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. Um, and I, and I, that's, I, that was the point. I, I'm glad that when you mentioned the minister's name, it sparked it. Mm. When we talked about the Honorable Elijah Muhammad's impact and not just being a black leader, but the divinity factor in terms of um, what he was able to do with divine intervention mm. and his divinely inspired mission. No one else was able to do that. Period. It's not to take away it's just it wasn't for them per se but guess what proof positive that god does not bless error is the mm. fact that this enemy worked against the honorable elijah muhammad and the nation and the savior from day one and the honorable elijah muhammad suffered as a result of trying to raise us and he never wavered and this enemy worked to destroy Words. him, his name, and his works, and they, they thought they had done it. And the fact that his star and chief helper, Minister Farrakhan, would be reactivated and start nothing. And when I say nothing, nothing in the sense of a mass of people with him, like the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, did not have a mass of followers once the Savior left. He was on his own. It was his family and few faithful that saw him as the legitimate leader that the Savior left in place. Guess what? Here we are. It would be impossible for the minister to have done what he has done had not Allah planned it out and the Christ backing him all the way through it. And this is why we know that the nation of Islam in the West is absolutely God-centered, God-inspired, and God and the Christ at the head of it, not dead, but living. Teach, teach, bless, bless, bless. Now, uh, I think I have some good news, Brother Carlos. Uh -huh. Sister, Lorraine. <laughs> Sister Lorraine. And our Sister Lorraine uh, has said, I have my original letter from the 70s. I received yeah. my ex in temple number seven, Harlem, New York City. 16 that, years old. She was 16. And I have a picture of Sister Lorraine as a 
teenager fighting her friends from the project building that she lived in, taking them down to the temple wow. to hear Minister Louis Farrakhan in those days. Our great sister from Delaware. Now, Sister Lorraine, you you had that Savior's letter all the time. You and her me talk about this. <laughs> okay. no, that's my sister. No, I love my sister. She has shared her personal history as well as beautiful pictures of her days at Temple Number no. Seven with Minister Farrakhan. Please, sister, uh, scan yeah. that letter right. <laughs> and email it to your brother. You know how to get your brother. <laughs> Praise be to Allah. Thank you. Thank, thank you. Thank you, Sister Lorraine, for sharing that. And um, listen to the puzzles come together. You know, so yeah. all that um, have heard the call for our, for my brother, uh, Student Minister Carlos, you know, if you have documentation as a pioneer, if you are a child of one of the members of the Nation of Islam, um, yeah. a grandchild, great grandchild, whatever it may be, uh, please know that we are going about our due diligence and collecting uh, for the archives to get the history right. Um, you know, that's uh, again why our brother has directed all that have asked about this history to um, primary sources. You have to go to uh, the primary sources. And if we take that a step further, as our brother mentioned, the primary source before us, living, walking, talking, teaching, and guiding us through this is the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. That's right. Um, so we, we, we thank Allah for him, um, for he is our, our direct connection to Master Father Muhammad through the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. And the context, these three um, link us to a history uh, that, yes, was made known in the 1930s or began to be made known in the 1930s. But uh, Master Fahd Muhammad studied us 20 years before he even began to teach us as a people um, there in Detroit, Black Bottom, Detroit. Uh, so without understanding who we are, we would be lost really in establishing who we want to be. You know, and that's an extremely important um, picture to have in this moment of upheaval, of universal change. And if you hear what the, where the, I wanna say the meat of this conversation landed on the table today was on self-knowledge, names. Where did we get these names from? Where did we get our self-identification from? Look what Muhammad Ali went through to establish his name that right. he was given by the Honorable Elijah Muhammad before the world. So in naming ourselves, in being named, we are now owned by the one who has named us. That's Look right. at that. So we, we, and when we say that, we say that with love. We say that not with a slave mentality because that ownership has set us free. That ownership has set us free and that's ownership of the knowledge of self, the knowledge of God, the knowledge of our enemy and the knowledge of time. So thank you, my dear brother. Did you have any closing remarks or any, any other thing you would like to share with us? Because you know this is not going to be the last time, inshallah, Allah willing. Um, because we have uh, been on the road many, many times, um, but now we can just jump on this uh, little contraption called Facebook or Instagram and, and begin to share. Are there any closing statements you would like to make? Uh-oh, it looks like our brother's screen may have frozen. Oh, maybe... Brother, Car Brother Carlos, are you there? We, we, we're looking for your uh, summary remarks or some, here, let me, t let me uh, text my brother. Okay. 
going to give our brother a second to come back on. Uh, our brother's screen froze. Uh, looks like we're fighting the internet. Might be the time. It's prime time around the country. Everybody's online, it seems. <laughs> and we're probably fighting for some bandwidth. But um, as we uh, begin to wrap this up, uh, can you please uh, just drop your information in the um, chat? Any comments, any thoughts, any reflections on what uh, you may have uh, heard today um, and what you intend, inshallah, uh, for yourselves to begin to uh, really implement in your own lives, in our own lives, around the table. This is what we encourage. We encourage us all to really speak to each other around the table. Let us begin to record our history, discuss, and turn off Netflix or uh, HBO, whatever it is we're watching, and, and begin to uh, have dialogue with one another. So I'm going to try to bring our breath back in. There he is. Right. Okay, there he is. They got it. They 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 kicked me back <laughs> off. It's off again. <laughs> yeah. So, but so it's, was, it, it's it's beautiful. I wanted to say, um, Imam, based on what you were saying about this love, mm -hmm. you know, this intense love that the Honorable Elijah Muhammad uh, has and had at that time and while he was working among us is that same continuation of heart in the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. Mm -hmm. And this is why he told us on July 4th that the Savior intervened for him when his mother was trying to abort him because he already knew his role mm -hmm. in the divine scheme of things. And so I wanted to share um, this letter just to show you uh, or share with us the love the Honorable Elijah Muhammad had and has for the followers. Uh, look at what he says. This is dated June 27, 1947, and it is written to Sister Thelma that I was telling you about. She was the secretary at that time and uh, of Temple Number 3. But look at how he closes out the letter because this is her report. She's actually sent him the, the monthly or weekly report. Many thanks to you and the Muslims in general in number three, Wisconsin, for food. Wow. See that? N listen, new home and emergency fund. Wow. Please tell my faithful brothers and sisters that I can never forget them and their faithfulness to me and my family through such great trials and great tribulations. Keep in mind, he's not even out of prison at this time an entire year yet. Mm. He says, may our God, Allah, rain upon each of you his blessings from heaven that you uh, be here, uh, with, uh, here within satisfied and in the hereafter too. We will expect some of you over Sunday, June 29th, 1947. Oh, My wow. best love and wishes to you and all of the great prosperity from Allah, our Savior, Master W.F. Muhammad, the Honorable Assalamu Alaikum, your brother, Elijah Muhammad. Wow. Yeah. So this is a letter from the Honorable, Elijah, the Honorable Muhammad. Elijah Muhammad to Sister Thelma, thanking Sister. her for her report. Wow. Wow. Praise be to Allah. Yeah. See, this is this. That's the depth of love um, where we have been taught half of our bowl of bean soup belongs to our brother or sister. That's <laughs> you right. know, and even more than that, um, we have a mighty work ahead of us. We have a tremendously rich history behind us and a roadmap uh, to what we can establish as brothers and sisters if we just pull our resources, pull our knowledge, pull uh, our identity, pull ourselves together. You know, um, that was what I think we were saying is that um, the meat of this conversation around the Savior's letter, around the names, 
around uh, what the Honorable Elijah Muhammad contributed uh, to the identity of Black America and Black people around the world is priceless. It's priceless. It's, it, it's priceless, beloved. And um, this in itself is a study, you know, and our brother really pointed to a major fact in, in, in some of his key remarks. Um, and that was that this did not come without a price, without sacrifice. As he mentioned in this letter, uh, this was recent. Uh, the letter he read was just shortly after the Honorable Elijah Muhammad uh, came out of the federal penitentiaries of yeah. this country. That's right. They, they pulled him off of the streets during a time of war uh, because they did not want that teaching of liberation on the streets. And they knew who they were after. Uh, so you do your history, we do our history uh, studies, and, and you'll see that it was not only the desire of the enemy, but it was their written policy that was passed down from decade after decade to attempt to disrupt, curb, and slow the growth of the nation of Islam. But they have not been successful, and they will not be successful. And this is living proof that the primary source is the student, is the student. So we thank Allah and we encourage us all to continue on our, our path of study, uh, not only of our history, but of our faith. Mm -hmm. You know, let's, let's not just collect things as our brother mentioned. Let's, let's get these books, get our history, read them. Um, make sure you have every publication of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad um, as your primary source. Make sure you, you uh, tune into forums like this to learn about the history. And do know that there are wonderful books of history. Our dear brother, uh, student minister, Dimitri yes. Muhammad, research minister um, in the Nation of Islam, has a beautiful book uh, on the history of Malcolm X. And um, I'm forgetting the title of his first uh, or earlier book on the history as well. Yeah, the, brother, or Truth, though, that was the collection. Invincible of, Truth, that's right. Yes, of the Pittsburgh Courier articles of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. That's right. And follow our brother, student minister Carlos. We put it up on the screen here for you at NOI Archives, at NOI Archives. And that's on Twitter uh, and Instagram. Um, I think those are your main main platforms, beloved. Twitter, yes. And Instagram. Okay. Yes, Twitter is Carlos Muhammad One. Carlos, Twitter is Carlos Muhammad the Number One mm -hmm. um, on uh, Twitter, and then you can go to uh, Facebook, the uh, Nation of Islam Historical Exhibit. Excellent. Yeah. Excellent. Also, Imam, I wanted to, if I could, Please. I wanted to share um, this letter from the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan in 1970 that he wrote to the Honorable Elijah Muhammad because we're talking about the celebration of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, but in our modern context, the three come together. That's right. And I wanted to read this letter because when we start talking about the love that the minister had and has for his teacher it is a life study in and of itself yes because not only was he representing the honorable elijah muhammad you got to understand it wasn't just representation as defined it was absolutely the greatest love story of our time in the term of the rise of black people listen to what he wrote as he was already working hard for the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. But as he told us on the 17th, he had already begun to see his teacher differently than the others. And wasn't that the problem for the Honorable Elijah Muhammad? Mm. Right before the Savior left, he saw his teacher differently than the rest, and mm. which became the cause of controversy. But look at the minister's compassion in terms of wanting to save the people. That's my point. The mission of raising the dead was on the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, but the minister now becomes a part of it deeper than just being a mosque minister, but he was being prepared in terms of that heart, that love for black people. 
Look at what he writes on April 19th, 1970. He says here, Dear Apostle, I want to report to you the success of my recent speaking engagements at New York University, hmm. New York State University in Albany, and Temple University in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. We were received well, and the people were overwhelmed with the knowledge of you, your program, and your wisdom. And I do believe and know that there were, uh, there were ever, where there were many converts made for you. He says here, now here's the crux. Mm -hmm. Dear Apostle, next week, Saturday, we're having a bazaar in New York at which we expect 10,000 black people. <laughs> Go ahead. I would, like, I would like very much on that day to convert the 10,000 people to you. We have advertised that you will be a, there will be a special message to Harlem from you through your representative on economics and narcotics, which mm. was a big thing happening in Harlem at that time. Brother James and Sister Lorraine, no. Here it is. Dear Apostle, may I please see you on Friday for a few moments so that you may guide me that I may convert 10,000 to you at once. Mm. Go ahead. Look at that. Right? May Allah bless, guide, and protect you. All of the followers send their greetings. Assalamu alaikum, your follower and servant, Louis Farrakhan. The minister wanted to get some guidance from his teacher on how to convert the amount of people expected to be there, meaning we're expecting 10,000. I want to catch all of them. All of them. <laughs> That's right. That's right. But, Our minister so now, never thought small. <laughs> <laughs> Not a percentage, you, but brother, all. Farrakhan, <laughs> Go ahead. Through you, Brother Farrakhan, That's right. I'll get all my people. That's just a snapshot. He already had the heart to get them all when he could get them all. Praise be to Allah. Yeah, so I'm just I'm just fired up. But no, nah, and and those who are watching and listening are as well. Let me just give you uh some of these. Uh Sister Sonia Muhammad. Uh she states. I'm in such appreciation that our history is not left in the hands of our enemy That's to be right. tainted, ruined, and untrue. Authentic facts. Thank you for sharing this rich history, our history. Long live Muhammad. And Praise that is the point. Praise be to Allah. Praise be to Allah. Another, our sister uh, showing gratitude is saying, may Allah continue to bless you and continue to share what you have been, uh, what you have been blessed to receive. Thank you, Brother Imam Sultan and Student Minister Carlos Muhammad. Praise be to Allah. Praise be to Allah. Um, we also have a question from one of our brothers uh, regarding uh, the Savior's Day letter. I'm sorry, the Savior's letter. Um, I think he more so wanted to share. Let me pull. Uh, there was one question from uh, Sister Patricia as we fo follow up. Were there, was there time out? Like what we have example in CD and <laughs> <laughs> entirely at that time. <laughs> uh, yes, uh, I can tell you that the, well, two things. There's a good lesson in this. Mm -hmm. Do you know that the, the Savior had a circuit court? in the 30s and um you would have to come to court if you caught a case mm. um and the savior would have depending on the investigation there were about six to seven laborers that would sign off on your paperwork um but we do have the paperwork on a case mm. and a sister ended up getting she was on trial to get 90 days for leaving town and not informing someone that she was going to do so. Mm. Okay, now, some might think that that's very extreme, but the reality at that time was 
population. The community was growing and budding in the seriousness of us knowing each other's well-being because we were under the uh, threat of the enemy at that time. That's right. That, that the Savior didn't want any follower harmed for their belief in Islam. We had fought the police department. So it was a very thick time. So if you were going to leave, it wasn't that you couldn't go out of town. But the sister did not inform anyone, meaning we don't know where you are. Where you are. Did something happen to you? Did the enemy lock you up? Are you dead? Amen. So um, her outcome was she got 90 days uh, for, for not that. But then we have seen other reports where the Savior has had to intervene because of the charges were uh, kind of extreme, mm -hmm. such as um, somebody caught a charge for clipping their nails. <laughs> okay. Okay. Yeah. That's um, a... <laughs> go right. ahead. Somebody else got up during one of the meetings to go to the bathroom. They got charged. Uh, sleeping in the meeting was a charge. Uh, de definitely not part of the restrictive law. <laughs> right. No, definitely not. So in the early days, there was a lot of um, work that had to be done mm -hmm. with black people being given authority that we've never had. <laughs> That's right. That's true. <laughs> and some of us still struggle with the law now in yeah. terms of, of, of the justice. And it's always been an issue. But um, yes, they, they did get time out. Now, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, uh, as the minister told us, he did not play around uh, with the law. And That's he right. did not care who it was, including if it was his own family. That's in right. Fact, he threatened the laborers and the family members that if they broke law, they would get double time out mm. because they should know better. And they're closer to the messenger in a sense in terms of duties and responsibilities. So um, that's just some of the things about uh, getting getting time out. But guess what? See, there's a, there is a connection between Moses and Jesus. Teach. <laughs> Lock, go ahead. See? So the Moses didn't have time to play around with the people because they were rebellious. So the law had to be straight at them. But the Jesus comes and teaches us the evolution of the origin of sin is in the heart and the mind. And that if we think a certain mm. thing, we are guilty in one sense. And some ask them, well, how could that be? The minister taught us that if you can prosecute the evil before you do it, then it is a sign that, you know, if you thought the thing, it, it potentially could happen. So you mm. try it, you prosecute it, you sentence it before it actually becomes a danger to yourself and to others. So the minister has been a mercy also due to the heightened presence of Satan in our time. Teach, right? See? So, so the reality of law is for us as Muslims to know that Allah laid the law out. Then as it is laid out before us now, from the Savior through the Honorable Elijah Muhammad through his minister, but you you and I have to exact that on ourselves and That's stop true. fearing if somebody else puts the law on us, put the law on yourself and govern That's yourself. True. That's the true growth of a Muslim, that, that I can be my own law person because it's between me and Allah and I don't wanna disappoint Allah, so I wanna have enough God consciousness and consciousness aware of God called taqwa mm -hmm. that if I think a thing, I would say, oh, that is so horrible. Allah, forgive me for Amen. even thinking that Amen. because I don't want that kind of thought or for it to go. So I just wanted to use that. But they did have a circuit court <laughs> in those days. <laughs> I, I got a, I got the case somewhere in this stack, yeah. but, but no, it, it, it was a circuit court. No, that question beautifully tied in and to something that we could possibly use to uh, reflect on the general meat that we were saying that came out of this yeah. around the letters, the name, and that put the bow on top of this gift called knowledge of self, right? 
um, that when the self-accusing spirit has been established, uh, that we truly then become uh, reflections of God. We become true servants of God. That's right. There's there's the, uh, ID. the ID card. <laughs> this is a early ID card. And the reason why I'm bringing this out to to finish this and let Iman finish it at the bottom of this card. Mm -hmm. Look at what the savior had at the bottom. The bearer is a registered Muslim. Kindly retain this card and punish of said bearer if found other than righteous. Because one of the charges in those days that was on the books in the early days was calling yourself a Muslim, but acting like a Christian. Mm. What, mm. what did he mean by that? He meant that we were not going to practice the religion of Islam, how we had become practices of Christianity, where we took the good name of a man, Jesus, to shield our dirty practice of religion, meaning we would right. go to church and then leave right out and go cut the fool. Right. So he was giving the people the right to punish us and take the card if mm. they saw us acting other than ourselves. And guess what? All of us that have been in the nation long enough know that when we became Muslims, there were many people that knew us before that that were so proud of what we had done with our lives and the cleaning up, right? And they would see us, and if they kind of saw us not on point, they would tell right. us right away, man, you ain't supposed to be doing that. See, that's, that's God's right. way of letting you know that you're on the right course and that the people, even if they're still in it, they see that their hope out of their sin, out of their ignorance, out of the gutter that this enemy has placed us in is through you as a follower of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad and uh, his minister. But I just, I'm glad I had it. I, I, I looked down in the baggie, man, but he wasn't playing around about no. us striving, to be, striving to be right. It, it points to um, that point of walking on water, right? Uh, yeah. That as a people, you want to represent Jesus. You want to represent Muhammad and walking on the water of emotion, right? Walking on the water, rising above emotion into the thinking of God. Um, I wanted to share this on that point because that's where true reform comes. Right. That's where true reform comes. Uh, our brother uh, Gregory, Brother Gregory Muhammad, he said, I wrote my savior's letter from prison in 1980 and received my answer in 1981, signed by the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. Confirmation. Confirmation. Yeah. Thank, you, Thank you, Brother, brother Gregory. Gregory. So our brother is showing us that in that state where we are locked away unto ourselves, that even through those bars, through those prison walls, comes a word that is true reform that is true transformation because we brothers and sisters have something in the teaching of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad and the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan that is truly provable. That's right. If one thing in our history all can bear witness to is the fact that a new human being, a new man, a new woman has been risen here in the wilderness of North America for all of the world to see. That's Praise right. be to Allah. Yes, sir. So we thank you. Thank you, Brother Gregory, for sharing that. And um, I know we've gone on a couple hours here. Uh, I really appreciate how um, those who have tuned in have been uh, engaged, sharing, also asking questions. If we were not able to get to your question tonight, if we missed it by any chance, uh, let us know that we will be back soon. And, and I pray our brother will be back with us again soon. Yes, um, yeah. This is your home, Brother Carlos, you know, <laughs> you know, and again, this is the brother that uh, I won't let air come between us, yes. right? 
This is the brother we we were on the road in all of these cities. Uh, if you into a table talks event, uh, you know the spirit. Uh, we ate over food. We reflected on the history and the way we did now. I think that's the only difference is we're not here eating in front of you <laughs> on the screen. But I'm sure uh, if we could, without you know uh, taking this to, to you don't want to hear us slurping our soup up, you know. <laughs> but but that's we right. definitely that's fed right. on um, that knowledge, you know, that history that will be able to help us. Uh, and guide us. And please visit again uh, NOI Archives on Instagram. At, on Instagram and the NOI exhibit. Yeah, on, on, Islam, historical yeah. exhibit on Facebook. And on Twitter, you can reach me at Carlos Muhammad, the number one uh, on Twitter. Excellent. Excellent. Praise be to Allah. Um, next time, inshallah, on. Uh, Table Talks Live, we will have none other than Dr. Shaquilla Hassan on, ah. <laughs> on October 20th, praise be to Allah. And the some- crown. We're gonna uh, talk about the crown. <laughs> the, star, the starry crown. Yes. So, so brother Carlos, if you know you're always invited, come on to yes, so, sir. you know, I anytime can. we do these. Um, we will also have back uh, Sister uh, Wendy, Sajda Muhammad, she'll be back for part two uh, from our earlier discussion last week. And we thank you for all uh, tuning in tonight. And uh, you can also visit us at tabletalks.org website. Um, continue to uh, check this page at Table Talks Project on Facebook, at T H E M table talks across platforms on IG and Twitter. Thank you again for joining us. Any final words, beloved? Yes, sir. I would just like to thank you, Brother Imam, so uh, much for bringing thank you. a brother in, in, in this journey together. And uh, I would um, please, dear brothers and sisters, continue to log in on Fridays. Uh, it's 2 p.m. on the East Coast but you know how to adjust that accordingly to your time zone. Um, and if not, if you're not able to tune in at that time, please go into your nation's profile and review, and now on NOI.org as well. Oh, uh, the right. Salatu Juma. Brother, what this quarantine has done, though it may have been challenging, I'm starting to see the benefit now of being able to do this on the platform in this way because of putting mm. up the slides of the Quranic verses and but mm. the subject matters and you have been on fire. Praise and, me. Um, man, I'm very, very thankful to to have you uh, for our nation. And I know the minister is very proud and uh, may Allah continue to increase you and grow you and bless you and your family uh, for all uh, that you have done and continue to do to keep our souls nourished on the best day for the Muslims sure. is Yom al Praise <laughs> be to Allah. Praise oh. be to Allah. Thank no, you, beloved. Thank you. Love you. And we hope to be hearing from you again soon. Yes, um, please give your family love and greetings and all of the believers there in Baltimore. Uh, you know what? <laughs> <laughs> That's a show in itself, Chief, because so much in the history of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad in Baltimore uh, that is, is extremely important. Uh, so we thank you. Uh, we'll learn about Mr. Evans. Yes, <laughs> Mr. Mr. Evans. Mr. Bogans, <laughs> right there in, in Baltimore. So yes. praise be to Allah. Thank you, Brother Carlos. We thank love you. you. Love you more. May Allah continue to bless you. Yes, sir. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum. Love you, family. Assalamu alaikum, family. Please, uh, for a replay, inshallah, this will be available for you. Um, continue to tune in. Uh, inshallah, on October the 20th, uh, we will be live with Dr. Shakila Hassan, um, who is the designer of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad's starry crown, his crescent crown. And inshallah, uh, we will hear about her history uh, with the family of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad and the particular 
sisterhood that she shared with Mother Clara Muhammad. Um, those who may have a little bit of history of Dr. Shakila Hassan, uh, she migrated uh, from uh, India at the time um, and is became a very close friend of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad and Mother Clara Muhammad uh, in a time in which uh, we saw a, the major growth of the Nation of Islam um, in the 1960s. Uh, we'll save her, her story for then. Um, meanwhile, uh, we will be posting uh, some background information of uh, the book she has published called The Starry Crown, uh, which details her memoirs uh, with the Honorable Elijah Muhammad and Mother Clara Muhammad and the family of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. So we thank you again for listening. We thank you for tuning in and we intend to see you soon. We greet you as we came with the greetings of peace and paradise. Assalamu alaikum.